The Roman Catholic Church and Slavery Some historians argue that if churches had used their power, the Atlantic slave trade might have never occurred. By the same logic, others argue that the Catholic Church and Catholic missionaries could have also helped to prevent colonization and the brutality of colonialism in Africa as a whole. History shows that the Catholic Church did not oppose the institution of slavery until the practice had already become infamous in most parts of the world. In most cases, the church and church leaders did not condemn slavery until the 17th century. The five major countries that dominated slavery and the slave trade in the New World were either Catholic or still retained their strong Catholic influences, including Spain, Portugal, France, England, and the Netherlands. Pope Pius IX himself said, Slavery itself, considered as such in its essential nature, is not at all contrary to the natural and divine law, and there can be several just titles of slavery, and these are referred to by approved theologians and commentators of the sacred canons. It is not contrary to the natural and divine law for a slave to be sold, bought, exchanged, or given. The actions of the Catholic Church towards slavery proved to be insincere. History shows that the first extensive shipment of black Africans that would later become known as the transatlantic slave trade was initiated at the request of Bishop Las Casas and authorized by Charles V in 1517. Ironically, Catholic missionaries such as the Jesuits who owned slaves worked to alleviate the suffering of Native American slaves in the New World. While showing mercy to Native Americans, the church placed some books critical of slavery on the index of forbidden books by the Holy Office between 1573 and 1826. Capuchin missionaries were excommunicated for calling for the emancipation of black slaves in the Americas. At various points, the Catholic Church would appease its followers in their conscience by trying to find a middle ground. Because Catholics considered baptized slaves in full communion with the church as opposed to some non-Catholic colonies, masters could not kill a slave without first facing murder charges. If able, slaves had the right to purchase their freedom, referred to as an act of manumission. Slaves could not be worked on Sundays or on the 30 Catholic feast days, guaranteeing some days of leisure. Slaves could also join lay Catholic fraternal organizations alongside free blacks. All of these protections perhaps provided slaves in Catholic territories with a degree of protection from the harshness of the dehumanizing experience of slavery. Amazingly, Catholic bishops would publicly condemn slavery but privately allowed it to continue in colonies that economically enriched the church. In, finally, in 1965, the Second Vatican Council declared that forced slavery was an infamy that dishonored the Creator and a poison in society. The timeline of the Catholic Church at critical points in history, including slavery. In 362 AD, the local council at Gangra in Asia Minor excommunicated anyone encouraging a slave to despise his master or withdraw from his service. Between 354 and 430 AD, St. Augustine taught that the institution of slavery derives from God and is beneficial to slaves and their masters. In 650 AD, Pope Martin I condemned people who taught slaves about freedom or who encouraged them to escape. In 1179 AD, the Third Lateran Council imposed slavery on those helping the Saracens. In 1226 AD, the legitimacy of slavery was incorporated in the Corpus Luris Canonicae, promulgated by Pope Gregory IX, which remained official law of the Church until 1913. Canon lawyers worked out four just articles for holding slaves. Slaves captured in war, persons condemned to slavery for a crime, persons selling themselves into slavery, including a father selling his child or children of a mother who is a slave. Between 1224 and 1274 AD, St. Thomas Aquinas defended slavery as an institution by God in punishment for sin and justified as being part of the right of nations and natural law. 
children of a slave mother were rightly slaves, even though they had not committed any personal sin. In, 15, in 1452 AD, Pope Nicholas V issued the papal bull Dum de Versus on 18 June 1452. It authorized King Alfonso V of Portugal to reduce any Saracens or Muslims and pagans and any other unbelievers to perpetual slavery. In 1493 AD, Pope Alexander VI authorized the King of Spain to enslave non-Christians of the Americas who were at war with Christian powers. 1494 AD, Pope Alexander VI, in the 1494 Treaty of Tordesillas, divided the known New World between the two countries, as there was a need to locate a group to work in areas where the supply of indigenous labor was insufficient to sustain their colonies, so Spain and Portugal imported Africans. Between 1500 and 1850 AD, 12 million Africans arrived in the Americas to toil as slaves. The vast majority of these slaves worked in the Catholic colonies of Spain and Portugal. In 1548 AD, Pope Paul III confirmed the right of clergy and laity to own slaves. In 1866, Pope IX declared slavery itself, considered as such in its essential nature, is not at all contrary to the natural and divine law.